Hello everybody, how's it going? Welcome to a brand new Game Maker tutorial. Today we are starting our Tower Defense series, well the Tower Defense Reborn series. Some of you might recognize me from the other uh, Tower Defense series that's on YouTube. Uh, I am the same guy, but what I'm doing is I'm making the series good. Uh, those videos, not only were they awful in quality, but so was the code. These are much better videos with much better code, and we're going to make a much better game. This game is looking awesome. I can't wait to see what you guys do with the code that uh, we're going to be going through over the next couple tutorials, and it's just going to be wicked. I, I can't wait. So, that being said, I think we should jump in here. Today we're going to be doing a basic enemy and a basic level, and we're going to set the enemy up so he can walk through the level, and then next time we're going to be doing a basic tower and then we're going to get into the wave system and a few other things you know more levels more enemies money lives different towers boss fights ah, so much stuff that being said if you have something you'd like to see in a future tutorial video please let me know and i will do my best to add that into a video at some point i'm thinking maybe at the end i just do a great big video that is of everyone's suggestions uh so it will probably be like a 30 minute video and I'll just do mini tutorials on what everyone is looking to see. Anyways, I say we jump in. What I have here is an empty Game Maker project, and I'm going to start off by creating a few sprites, because uh, that's always a good way to start off uh, your projects. Now, I'm not much of an artist, but I do like to uh, I do like to mess around with art, uh, so that'll be a later tutorial. But for now, we're just going to use some nice rectangles because it's this series is a lot more focused on the code. Uh, how you want your game to look uh, is really down to you. Uh, so if you want an art tutorial, you're really going to learn how to draw good rectangles here. Uh, but otherwise, I can't really help you out too much. Um, but I hope, hopefully, that doesn't turn you off. Stick around. Um, I'd like to bring some people in to do that. Ah, never mind. You know, we'll, we'll talk about this another time. Let's get into some programming. Uh, well, I guess we're not doing programming yet, but soon, soon we will be. Uh, so let's name this a sprite. I'm going to call mine SBR underscore enemy. I do put the SBR in the front there as just an organizational thing because uh, when it's in your code, uh, if I use my SBR enemy in my code somewhere, maybe for animation, this way I know I'm talking about the enemy sprite and not the enemy object or not the enemy sound. Like It's just an organizational thing. So I do highly recommend that you do that in your projects. So I'm going to hit edit sprite and I'm going to create a new sprite here and I'm going to stick with the default 32 by 32. So I'm going to double click and I'm going to open this up and I'm just going to take a red color. Not really sure what we're looking for here. Maybe like a, hmm, maybe something like, uh, I don't know, play around, get a color that you really like. Something like that. You know, even though it, I can't make the sprite look, you know, be all fancy with details, I can make the color look good. So we've got a nice little red enemy here. Perfect. Exactly what we're looking for. I'm just going to hit the check mark and the check mark once again. And that kind of declares that this is our enemy and it's going to stay this way. Now, what we're going to do really quick before we get off this screen here is I'm going to hit center on the origin. And all that's going to do is that's going to set the origin point to the center of our object. So that way, when our enemies follow the path, uh, they're following it in the center of the path and not like off to the side a bit. It just looks a bit neater. So I'm going to hit OK. And what we're going to do next is we're going to create one more sprite, <laughs> another one. And I'm going to call this SBR underscore dirt. And we're going to use the dirt object to kind of lay out our level, you know, get an idea of where the enemies are going to be heading. So I'm going to hit edit sprite and I'm going to create a new one, 32 by 32, like always. And let's pop in here and I'm going to pick a brownish color. Um, brown, yeah, something like that, maybe. Perfect. That'll do for now. We can go do more to it in the future. So I'm going to, you don't have to center this one, uh, but that's that. So we have our two sprites. We have our enemy and our dirt. Now, what do we have to do to add these into the game? You might be wondering if you're new to Game Maker. Well, we have to turn these into objects. So let's create a new object. I'm going to call this obj underscore enemy, once again for organizational reasons. And right below the title here, you can see I have to set the sprite. 
and I'm gonna call this SBR enemy. Uh, so I'm setting that sprite to the object. So when I put this object in the game, it's gonna look like a little or a little red square. <laughs> Can't talk today, can I? Nope. Moving on. <laughs> Let's create another object and I'm gonna call this OBJ underscore dirt. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna set the sprite to dirt and I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm going to right click on rooms and let's create a new room. If you go to settings, you can change the width and height of the room. I'm going to make mine 640 by 480. Oh, I hit something on my keyboard, but I don't know what. Ha. Huh. Anyways, 640 by 480. That's just a nice, uh, nice size. Looks good on most screens. Really good for HTML5. I don't know. That's, that's usually what I tend to stick with. I'm going to rename it to rm underscore level one. So we know that this is the room for level one. And I'm going to go over to backgrounds. Now, of course, we don't just want a pathway on this kind of gross gray background here. So I'm going to hit color and we're going to select a green color. I'm just going to select that one there. Uh, if you can't see, it's four over from the left and it's four down. Uh, so it's a good one. I like it. It's a nice little green. And we're going to go to objects. And now we can actually select what object we want to place into the game. I'm going to start with the dirt and I'm going to make pathway. Now what you can do is you can click each one individually. Or if you hold shift and control, you can actually place multiple at once. So what we've got here is a nice little path. So you can make yours look however you want. Um, everything you're going to be learning is uh, completely editable, editable, not edible, you can't eat it, but it's editable uh, to your liking. So your level can look however you want, um, but you know, you're still going to learn how to be able to make enemies walk through it, which I think is cool. You guys can really make the games that you want to see. So we got a nice little level here and I'm going to hit check because what we need to do is we need a way to make the enemy follow the path. So we need a way to get this little enemy guy all the way down and around. So how do we make an enemy follow a path? Well, we're gonna use, what do you know, we're gonna use a path, uh, which is a really cool thing in Game Maker where you can set objects to follow a set, you know, destination, a set way of moving around. So if we right click on paths and we hit create path, this is going to open up this kind of funky looking menu here. I don't like it that big. That kind of makes me uncomfortable and I don't know why. So. <laughs> We've got our medium sized window here and we have the option here to name it. I'm going to call mine PTH underscore, whoops, that's not underscore, level one. And of course, you know, we've just named it, but how do we know where the path is? Well, if you look up here in this menu, if we go to the very end, you see we got this little select room background. If we click on that and we click on room level one. We, know, we can now see our room. This is our room and you know we're visible of it. So how do we make a path in this room? Well, it's quite easy actually. First off, we're going to click where we wanted to start. And then we're going to click each point where we want kind of turns to be. So I'm going to click here and then here and then like mm, here. I'm going to move that up one because that's not as even. So now we have a path that goes, you know, this path follows, but it is, it's got this big line through it. If you go on the left here and you uncheck closed, now we've got our nice little path. So the enemies are going to start here. This is number one, as you can see, and then they're going to go to number two, which is right there. And then number three and then number four. And of course, if they do make it to number four, that basically just means that the player loses a life. Um, and then if they lose enough lives, they lose the game. So we've got our path here. We've got four kind of points. How do we make the enemy follow this path? Well, it's actually not as hard as you may think. So if we open the OBJ enemy, we're going to add an event and we're going to add a create event. Now the create event, basically anything in the create event is run as soon as the enemy spawns into the game. As soon as it's created in our world, it's going to start running whatever code we tell it to in the create event. So if you go four tabs down on the right here and we go to control and we drag in some code, what we can do is we can tell it to start the path. So as soon as the enemy spawns, we want it to start moving down the path. So this is a very simple line of code actually. We're going to type path 
underscore start. So that is a function that basically game makers uh, uses to know to start walking down a pathway. And as you can see down here, it takes four um, arguments is what they're called in programming. Uh, so these are kind of four settings for the function. So it's path, speed, end action, and absolute. So the first one is path. So that basically means we have to say what path we want it to walk down. And I'm going to put PTH underscore, whoops, that's not underscore, level one. So that's basically telling the enemy to walk down, you know, to follow the path we just made, to follow path level one. Next, we, have, we need to set the speed. Now the speed is how fast the enemy is going to be running down the path. You can make this whatever you like. You might want the enemies going slow. You might want them going fast. Maybe changes based on the enemy. I'm just going to set mine to four. Um, I find that tends to be a good speed, four or five. It's just kind of an, it's a decent speed to start out with. Maybe we'll change it later on. Next is the end action. Now the end action, I believe there's two or three. There might be four. Uh, I've only ever used one. Uh, but basically that states what happens to the enemy once it's reached the end of the path. So what happens after it's reached the end? Does it restart the path? Does it die? What happens? And I'm just going to put zero. And basically zero is saying that once the enemy gets to the end of the path, it's just going to stop. It's just going to stay there which is, that's exactly what we want. Uh, we don't want it to restart or anything or go backwards. We just want it to stop. And then we have one more argument and that says, it says absolute. Now, absolute basically means, do you want it to follow the path exactly? Or do you want it to just roughly kind of follow it? Like just kind of more of, you know, a mingle, like just kind of, you know, and we're gonna take the idea of the pathway and we're gonna use it. But we're not really going to use it that much and we actually we do want it to follow the path exactly so i'm going to put one so we've set the path we've set the speed we've set the end action and we've set if it's absolute or not so i'm going to hit check and i'm going to hit check and what i'm going to do is i'm going to place if i go to objects here i'm going to place an enemy in the room now you might say whoa okay you're putting it there but the path is over here in the create event, so as soon as the game's going to start, the enemy is just going to jump here and start the path. Uh, so we can put it anywhere we want, uh, and it won't make a difference. Um, we have not set up a wave system yet, so in the future you won't actually have to place any enemies. So I'm going to hit check, and let's run the game. Let's see what we've created in this first 12, almost 13 minutes here. So I'm going to hit play, and it's going to boot up, probably slowly, because I'm recording. I, I greatly apologize. Oh, you know what? Let's go decently fast today. I'm pretty impressed. So we are here. Oh, now I forgot to mention this earlier. You might be going, okay, hold on. My enemy's gone. My enemy has disappeared. It does not exist. Your code is broken. You are a joke. I'm unsubscribing. I'm disliking and I'm leaving. Never coming back. Okay, calm down. Back off for just a sec. Game Maker uh, works on a depth uh, type thing. So you can you use depth to set objects behind or in front of each other. Now what we've done here is the dirt and the enemy have the exact same depth. So Game Maker doesn't know what to do, so it's just stuck the enemy behind the dirt. So what we need to do is we need the enemy to be on top of the dirt. So the best way to do this is we're gonna go to OBJ Dirt. I'm gonna double click on that, yeah, there we go. And under here on the left hand side here, you're gonna see depth. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set it to one. So the higher the number, the further back the object is going to be. So what we could have done is we can always set OBJ enemy to negative one. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring it forward, but we can leave that for now. And if we can just set dirt to one. So I could make this a hundred and then it would be a hundred layers back. Uh, yeah, just think of it as layers. Um, but of course, if you go into the negatives, you're just bringing it forward. So you're going to use that a lot um, in the future. Uh, it's a very, very helpful thing to know, and it can really change your game. So let's run again. And it's going to boot up here. Not as fast as before, but still a decently fast amount. And as you can see, our enemy is following the path. Now, of course, as we get further into the game, we're going to have like 27,000 enemies running through and the player is going to be scrambling to attempt to place towers quick enough so that 
you know, something can happen out of it so that, you know, he can win the game. I would for now we just have the one. And of course, it disappears because we've set it to just stop once it's reached the end. So there you go. That is the start of our tower defense you know, game. You might be thinking, oh, it's not much, but just wait. As we start adding more and more and more onto it, uh, it's just going to turn to something amazing. And I, kn and I know that you will make it you know, even greater than what I've imagined. So I can't wait. Show me your progress. You know, send me, upload your, you know, a screenshot of your game to Imgur. Send me that image and I'll, uh, you know, share it on Facebook or something. I don't know because I love seeing what you guys do. And as time goes on, just show me what you're, you know, show me what you're creating. Show me what you're turning this into. Um, it's been a pleasure uh, talking with you guys. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I will do my best to help you. And I guarantee other people uh, will do their best to help you because I love seeing that, you know, people getting involved and helping where they can. And I'd like to thank all of you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. And if you'd like, um, you know, stick around. We're going to do some pretty cool stuff. So have uh, fun in your future adventures. Happy devving.